Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for attending this short panel. Um, what we like to discuss here is mostly a very important thing that's happening for the maker movement. Just basically the interest uh, in the maker movement also by European Commission, European Union, and also all the research projects like the Horizon 2020 project. Um, which is this is a very important step in our in the history of our movement because it's not really in the moment where we, are, we can start to measure what we are doing, we can improve what we are doing and also we can communicate and let's say also even ask for more money afterwards. So it's also a very good moment where we have more interest and more people have more interest. Um, we are going to present three projects, three Horizon 2020 projects. So these are among the different kind of European projects, these are the ones that are more complex, bigger, there are of course different kind of projects that is, uh, let's say these are the flagship projects, so it's actually good that we are working as the maker movement. And more specifically, uh, the three projects are part of this uh, project are called Collecting Awareness Platform for Sustainability and Social Innovation, also shortened as CAPS. Uh, what are these CAPS? What is this platform? Uh, this is about the, the idea of digital platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Google as well, Apple. Somehow, so the idea of really digital services that they can bridge and connect and network a lot of people with different uh, initiatives for work, for leisure, and of course using that network for uh, creating effects that are much bigger than just the sum of the single user. The focus of these CAPS is that they focus more on collaboration, awareness, democracy, sustainability, the social dimension of this platform. So it's not about making money, but about you know, making society better with everybody. So the focus of these CAPS have been in several dimensions, like economy, making, consumption, environmental action, democracy, policy making. And all the labels that you see, the rectangle labels here are different Horizon 2020, the CAPS. So, it means there are already a lot of different CAPS Horizon 2020 projects. I think now we are we have actually part of the second wave. There is a third wave also that's going to start I think, in January. Uh, so there has been a lot of work in you know, trying to understand how to make this platform much more social. And basically, um, the good thing is that there are three projects working on with the making movement in this uh, wave. And basically, what we are going to to present now is the projects. Just. <coughs> so we'll start with Make It, that's the project uh, that we need uh, at least work in. Uh, the idea of Make It and why we started is that it's a bit more broader in uh, trying to understand the relationship between CAPS and maker movement, platform and makers more than specifically focusing on uh, some other issues. So I'm Massimo Kinelli, I work at IEC Paula Barcelona and Elizabeth Utenfraud that works at the Center for Social Innovation in Vienna. So what we are trying to do, we make it, is try to understand with really how to understand the maker movement a bit better with CAPS, but also how to understand how makers use CAPS and how to improve CAPS, maker CAPS. So CAPS specifically platform for the maker movement and we're also trying to document everything on the website, so everything that we are discussing is on make-it.io. So usually also what happens when we have these projects, these Horizon 2020 projects, that uh, since we are addressing complex topics, but it's also difficult that you get money just for doing one project alone, you have to build consortium of organization from all over Europe. So it's not just because organization, they have different perspective and understanding, uh, about a complex topic, but also because the idea is to you know, strengthen collaboration among countries, among different disciplines. So that's why we have uh, an organization in our consortium. Half of them are research organization, the, half of the other half are maker organization. Only in front of Barcelona, we are in the middle. So we have Teneon in Netherlands, Danish Technological Institute, the Center for Social Innovation, and uh, Pudu in uh, Germany. Paula Barcelona, Paula Zagreb, Epilab in Vienna, uh, the Science Center in uh, Tartu in Estonia, and Creative Field, which is a company in Denmark. So we are trying to understand a bit more about the, the, the maker movement, and we are trying to use three perspectives for this. So one, by studying 
uh, 10 cases all over Europe. And another one is trying to understand the, what's happening in technology, that's the technology for makers and creating new scenarios and exploring that. And then use these ideas for doing actual research. So I've chosen really with people, trying to bring a bit of more innovation and test how this is uh, accepted by communities and users. So we are documenting everything. Now actually make it is at the end. We are lucky last two, three weeks, actually last month, today is the 1st of December. And so everything is documented, especially in the liberal, but we have also open data, software, uh, blog posts and videos. So uh, it's the focus also that we have tried to do is not just we do research on our own, but also communicate as much as possible. <coughs> also we have uh, scientific publications, uh, especially for the, the makers and the tablet network, I also wrote a small, a short text about possible idea for future research, especially trying to understand the impact of the tablet network. Another um, way we are addressing this, not just trying to understand technology, but also working a bit on delivering a bit of technology. Um, we try to focus not on creating another platform, but try to understand elements that could be used in platforms and helping already existing platforms or making reusable open source components. So one is this TechRadar. And TechRadar is, is an application that can be used to understand for understanding trends, platforms, and uh, how they connected and could be seen in their different stages of life cycle, how they are adopted by users. So this is an application for exploring all the possibilities in technology for the makers. We're also working on doing something similar, but more uh, data-driven application, more than application open uh, with the input of the users. And this makerspace server is more about visualizing what happens with all the makerspaces and fab labs and makerspaces worldwide. And as you see, well, we are finalizing, but it's in GitHub, so it's going to be open source. Everything is open source after ready. So the idea is also to share whatever we do as a tool also with other researchers and communities. So another one, for example, is, uh, is a Python model for analyzing interactions in collaborative processes. Uh, the starting point has been for, for analyzing collaboration in GitHub. So how do I know if people are collaborating in a, an open source project, in a maker project? So this is software that analyzes interactions over time. So if you want to see an example, this is uh, an analysis of fablabs.io, the open source platform of the FabLab uh, global network. Um, this maps not just the individual contribution, but the collaboration. So that's why if you see the first month there is nothing, because it was just one developer working alone. And when more people join, of course, collaboration improves. And then with this you can also understand where it happened and how, if it's just by writing code, discussing issues, and of course you can track what's happening in a collaboration in the community and improve that. And of course this also and gives another perspective as well, so not just what happens through time, but also the interaction among people. And this is interesting because you see one part of the network of users of the platform or the developer or the developer of the platform are not active because they are alone, unconnected. Another part is connected, but only few people are actually writing code. So the one that are green and the people writing code, that one are just discussing. So these are all, always good way for understanding also how to get people more engaged with projects. And another thing that we've been doing with Fallops is also trying to do a user uh, survey. And Fallops has yes, 12,000 users. We had replies from 1,000 and we are actually now um, analyzing all the data for also trying to understand how we could improve it you know, and trying to understand a bit from the perspective from it. And well, related to Fallops IO, we're also starting now a Creative Europe project, a platform project. So it's, even if it's Creative Europe, which is less about research than Horizon 2020, it's more about promotion of maker been working on uh, creating a, uh, a better platform for makers. As I said before, we had three perspectives for understanding the maker movement. One is uh, case studies, and Elizabeth is going to talk about that. Um, yeah, we were in the project, we were responsible for the case study research, uh, and we analyzed 10 different maker initiatives. Some of them were part of the consortium, so there were typical fab labs and makerspaces such as Happy Lab Vienna, Fab Lab um, Barcelona, Fab Lab Zagreb, um, and other two from Germany like Hayavit and, and Dezentrale. 
and also Minimaker Fair and uh, some companies uh, operating at the interface between makers and, and industry like the Smart Banding Factory and, uh, and uh, Arduino. We have followed in our research uh, three different research pillars. The first one is organization and governance. There we wanted to know how are makers organized, how are they governed or how do they organize themselves. In the second research pillar, it, this was peer and collaborative behaviors and there we wanted to know how do makers develop their skills, how do they interact, how do they exchange ideas. Um, and then the last pillar, value creation and impact, we wanted to know which impact is generated in the maker movement or in these cases and which, which values are created. And um, we have done, in these 10 cases, we have done uh, four interviews per case, so resulting in 40 interviews, one with the manager of the initiative and three with makers. And then we additionally had uh, a survey for the managers. So we had a lot of data and we applied then qualitative, qualitative analysis uh, methods to distill and to answer the research questions that were predefined. So it was a mix of deductive and inductive coding. Uh, which resulted in 150 pages of uh, report, which I will not uh, be able to tell now in detail. But um, since time is limited, I've just uh, I want to share some key insights. Uh, we call it 10 lessons learned. Um, yeah, that I've already covered. So the lesson one was that uh, we don't see yet a big shift between uh, no, from centralized production happening to decentralized production uh, but there is a huge potential in this and we also do not see really a conflict between uh, products which are produced in masses and products that are produced in a maker movement uh, or by makers because they are selling uh, to different people or to different needs they are serving niche markets while mass products can be bought on the shelf for, every, from, um, for everybody um, the second lesson is, is uh, a similar one. It's a, a big advantage that maker products have that they can uh, satisfy the user needs, the specific preferences that they can be produced for this one single customer, for this one single person, which mass products can never have as disadvantaged mass, pro mass products do not have. Um, the third lesson was that we saw that all the cases that we have analyzed had a good network uh, with different stakeholders. So all of them had uh, links, collaborations going on with educational institutions from kindergartens to university students. So either they went out and offered workshops or, or educational institutions with their pupils came to the Fab Lab to the Makerspace and had their workshops there. Um, and several also had links to policy makers or so governmental organizations, um, some also health and, and uh, companies. And it seems that this, this network really helps to, uh, to augment sustainability of the makerspace. Um, what we saw, what was missing, at least in our cases, was that there was quite an insecure way how to proceed from uh, the invention of the product to, to the placement on the market. So when it comes to selling the product, there is a, a lack of legal advice, of commercial advice. So uh, this, this way is not easy to go if this, uh, if, if this guidance is missing. Then lesson number five um, is that we observed a tension between uh, the value of openness that makers in general tend to be very keen of uh, and the commercial idea. So at the moment when, when somebody, somebody wants to make money out of the idea, it's, it's difficult to, to keep it open, of course. Um, the sixth lesson uh, has, to do, has to deal with gender equality. So, uh, when it comes to gender and, and technology, there are stereotypes, cultural stereotypes, which of course do not stop at the doors of the makerspace. Uh, in our case, it, is, it was 9 out of 10 uh, initiatives which were managed by, by a man. And we also saw um, among the facilitators, um, maybe that, that uh, men were overrepresented. 
in the cases where there were female instructors, female facilitators, we could see that it helps to attract other women, so to have a bit more balance. And this is not only about gender, this is also about age, so typically makers are between 25 and 35 years old, so also the elderly and the young, sometimes some missing. Lesson number seven uh, is to, it's about exchanging ideas, learning from each other. So it seems that to exchange ideas, this is very important for makers, but there needs to be a trustful atmosphere in the maker space, or in the maker initiative, uh, or also in the virtual space. Um, lesson number eight is uh, a very similar one. So there needs to be a communicative atmosphere in order to, to make this happen. And this can also be already be addressed in design in the design of the maker space. So if you have a maker space that is organized only around the machines, and so maybe this is missing, uh, it is helpful if there is like a, a living area, a, a couch or a coffee machine or something, so that people come together and talk about their ideas. Uh, lesson number nine has to do with impact. So we recognize uh, economic impact. Uh, especially because many startup companies have the roots in, in the maker movement since makers can test their ideas in the maker space, make their first prototype and, and then go to search for investment so that this is a really good advantage, a great advantage and then also some, some uh, jobs are created in the area. Last lesson that, that we would like to share is about the, uh, about the environmental impact. Um, we cannot say that make makers are, uh, in average, more aware about uh, environmental issues, but we have seen many, many examples of, uh, of uh, products that address a specific, uh, a specific um, uh, ecological problem. So this is really inspiring if, if we can bring it to another scale. Yeah, that was it from my side. Hello, I'm Costantino Buongiorno from uh, WeMake. Um, we are part of the Open Care Consortium. Also, Open Care is a uh, Horizon 2020 CAPSI project. And um, we recently had a conference. You can look at opencare.cc and you will find some informations uh, about the conference, the programs, and I gave this um, presentation during the conference, so I will try to reproduce the discourse, the, the, the talk that I gave uh, in Italian in English for the first time, so sorry for <coughs> part of this missing, so of course we are a fab lab and I, I don't have um, to discuss what, what is a fab lab here. But, um, so this diagram uh, came from the proposal that is, uh, by the way, readable online. So the, we, we, we tested, we set up uh, an environment uh, in which, of course, the um, networking, uh, the network analysis, uh, the ethnographical analysis uh, is uh, on top on the discussion. Uh, that uh, are made by people, so persons, uh, talking about care topics. And the platform that, is, that we are using is, is called uh, Edge Riders. Uh, it's based on discourse, so it's, uh, it's now um, yeah, pretty easy to replicate uh, the, the setup of the, the network analysis that we made and the ethnographic analysis. But as we, as you can see in this diagram, we make it was part of trying to bring information from the online conversation and convert it in actual prototypes. And this is not uh, easy at all, and this is not uh, trivial at all. But it it could be very powerful, and I think that. Uh, we need to work as FabLab network, as a, let's say, network of uh, FabLab that share not only technologies, uh, meaning uh, machines, but especially values and way of doing things. Uh, we need still to, 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 to leverage on this kind of collaboration that 
is uh, cross-cutting between uh, let's say the online and the offline tools and we, we made some experimentation in, during these two years uh, but, uh, and we focus especially on, 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 on creating bridges and channel of communication between the local community and the online community and the, 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 they have very different uh, behavior, uh, composition, uh, way of discussing, uh, way of uh, um, let's say, think about projects uh, and, uh, and, and topics uh, and whatsoever. And of course the offline community is not only made by makers uh, or uh, technologists or uh, nerd in general, but there are of course citizens uh, that wants to be part or that uh, we need to take care of uh, being part of this uh, kind of um, uh, projects, uh, prototypes uh, or a new way of doing things. And, they, and we did decided to, 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 to approach the care, uh, so care in, in, in a very large uh, definition, because of course we have seen during these, uh, these years, and if you visit the pavilion number six, for example, you, you will have a lot of uh, example of, on, on this, that pro maker projects are very um, powerful when we have to uh, tackle some uh, very individual, very uh, customized, um, very uh, project that needs a lot of customization. Um, also, if they are not products and uh, the interesting niche that we are uh, exploring right now are of course all the devices, all the medical devices in, in healthcare, but uh, we are trying to understand also how to uh, apply the maker way of prototyping, not only in products, uh, but especially in all the technologies uh, that are in the care field, uh, arriving to uh, policy making. So the, the experiment that we have uh, that we run with Comune di Milano about uh, that is called uh, Open Run Better is about the policy that Comune di Milano deploy on the city, especially on the on, on the store of the city, and uh, so give, obliging them to have at least a temporary ramp in order to to overcome an, an obstacle with a wheelchair, for example. And uh, so the, the problem in, in that situation is, uh, of course, we can uh, iterate on a, pro on a product, we can uh, put some technology in, uh, in, in a button uh, or create an app to, to help people uh, and knowing where, uh, where are the, the stores that are accessible. But of course, uh, the design issue in that process is the policy itself. If the policy is not well designed, of course, uh, there are a lot of friction in, uh, in the process. So, uh, yeah, we try to work online and offline, creating bridges uh, in, between the, so in between the conversation, uh, in between the public that we touch. And uh, I think that uh, um, so I try to rep uh, represent my, my, my in this visualization the fact uh, that uh, we as FabLab we make as a FabLab uh, is a bridge uh, is a is an is an instance uh, in between uh, online and offline communities and uh, if we reali realize that uh, we can uh, let's say mm, value what are our networks uh, in the online and the, in the offline community. But of course, uh, we have uh, also these uh, vertical layers of com competencies, that are the verticals. So we, we are people uh, specialized in education, in robotics, in manufacturing, uh, in civic science. Uh, so we cover a lot of things, uh, a lot of topics. And uh, so, 
we are like a beans, hybrid beans in between these uh, two layers that are uh, the online community and offline communities that are multiple layers and uh, we are hybrids also in, in competencies, uh, in, uh, in, in, in topics, in a very specific field. And so we, during these two years also, Open Care is uh, at the end. So it will be the, the, last, the last weeks to wrap up. Uh, we realized two, let's say, flagship uh, prototypes that are open on bed day in pair. But we also, um, let's say, uh, work a little bit to, a little bit to, to engineer uh, a, a residency program that we currently have in the makerspace. So we invited uh, makers that are uh, interested in uh, or the, that are developing a care project or arts, arts project or design project. But for this season, we, we focus on, on, on care projects in order to, let's say, incubate them, uh, accelerate their project in a, in a three to two months uh, residency program. And uh, of course, this is not this is a, a little part of the care project that we are running uh, um, in, in We Make. Uh, and uh, I think that is, uh, can be, everything is published online. We created uh, some web, mini website uh, that, that are collecting uh, all the materials. You can start from opencare.cc and under projects, you can uh, look through. Uh, some documentation. We also created some template that can that is uh, available. It's called uh, micro website template. Uh, it's over here, and you can reuse it if you want to use the the, the same uh, stack of software to produce this mini website. It can be interesting, but of course, uh, so of course, all the Capsi program uh, was. Uh, uh, intended to understand what, how can we uh, gain value on, um, on, 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 on the network and on, in, in the digital sphere of the networks uh, because it is scal scalable, uh, it's powerful and uh, there are a lot of value that we can, uh, that we can use but uh, especially in the care and in the local perspective uh, we, we need to really understand on how to deploy this uh, conversation into projects. And uh, so talking about, we are talking about people, projects and artifacts. And um, so as I said also some, some days ago, I think that this, uh, this book is very interesting, uh, not only because uh, it's very relevant for the, the kind of innovation that we are doing, but also because uh, so creating this 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 uh, double paradigm, uh, the, the usual innovation and the free innovation paradigm, it it, it goes and Eric von Ippel goes um, very far away, and I think that is uh, also relevant for the care system. So I think that uh, also in this situation, if we create. Uh, talking about care, an open care paradigm is not because we want to fight the, the business as, as usual uh, care system, but because we need to, let's say, state something, of course, uh, but we have also to, to, to blend everything together and we, we have to create uh, all the small bridges uh, from one opposite to the other not only in terms of, uh, let's say, values, uh, but also in terms of uh, uh, dimension of growth. And uh, if we, uh, in these projects, we create some uh, tips and tricks uh, or some hints in order to, uh, in some cases, uh, lower some barrier, but uh, when it's not possible, for example, in the care system, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, certification uh, issue and problem about, uh, let's say, 
uh, national procurements of services and products that are very big topics uh, that we will, that we will tackle in some way <laughs> in some years I think but uh, there are also some, um, a lot of opportunities uh, in order to create uh, uh, small markets, small solutions, small economies uh, that are able to um, sustain this, this kind of innovation. And so I think that uh, if we talk uh, about uh, distributed uh, whatsoever, uh, we can talk also <coughs> about uh, the, uh, I think that is a distributed innovation. I think that uh, in many ways CAPSI are exploring uh, the, the values that can be posit positively extracted from, from, from FabLabs locally and uh, so uh, locally and, uh, and, and, uh, and in a level that is more European. <laughs> But I think that uh, the, the switch that we, we have to, um, to, to focus and to continue working on with the, with the European institution and with the local institution is that, uh, that we have to be part of the, of the panorama of the innovation. And we, if we are, let's say, part of this panorama, part of this uh, scenario, uh, we can uh, we can deliver some good innovation in, into the into the ecosystem. Yes. Hi, I am Dario uh, Dario Marmo from Lama Agency. Uh, Lama is a cooperative company that uh, is based in Florence and founded the Impact Hub of Florence. The Impact Hub is a net an international network of co-working spaces that is now in more than 100 cities around the world. And uh, we are part of a consortium that uh, is implementing now uh, this third CAPSI uh, project. Uh, we started one year later, so we are uh, in, the, in the middle of, uh, of our development. Um, and basically the aim of, uh, of OpenMaker is to create a collaborative ecosystem in several uh, European cities uh, to um, stimulate uh, the interaction between makers and manufacturers uh, towards sustainable business models and to uh, innovate their production processes, products uh, and governance systems. So um, the assumption behind the maker, and I think uh, that partially is also an assumption that it lags behind uh, the CAPS uh, the CAPS framework is that uh, every person is a door to a different world, uh, but some person open much more worlds than others. This means that uh, some persons or spaces can be considered as nodes, let's say the, the big bubbles here in the, in the image. And uh, these big bubbles basically are uh, enablers, are what we consider as enablers of relations. So, um, what we wanted to implement with this project was not only just facilitating matchmaking, but giving information on who and where are the nodes or the resource persons and help enabling new kind of connections by empowering these nodes, uh, these enablers. And basically, it's what, what happens in every impact hub of the world where there is a host, there is the, the person that knows everybody and that when you enter in a hub can connect you to someone that is of your interest or that can be interested in what you do. So, um, just, just to, this is just to recap what I already said more or less. Uh, the only inter interesting thing maybe that I haven't told that much is that of course we are doing this offline through events but also online through a platform that uh, um, is still under development but in 2011 will give uh, information about networks and communities 
which uh, is not visible yet. Okay, so um, basically now we know who is connected online, but we cannot know how people do connect offline. So the idea is to have an event-based platform that gives information also on who met who in which occasion or who can be interesting for you to meet um, according to your interests or your projects. So these are the five cities where OpenMaker is starting from uh, and also some of the partners. In Italy, there is not only LAMA, there is also the Topics uh, Consortium uh, from Turin, that it's, uh, it's here <laughs> with us. And, um, and basically, of course, Bratislava is not Bilbao, uh, and Liverpool is not Florence. So every uh, local enabling space, that's how we, we call this, uh, has its different strategy. But what we share is uh, a methodology, a framework, a way to uh, enhance this online, offline interaction. So that's how we proceeded. And uh, mm, basically we mapped our target groups. Okay, so we started from mm, our, we call it inner circle, the people that we knew more or less directly. And we asked them to nominate someone else that could be interested <laughs> in the project. Then we designed with them some first events. Some, um, some were a small workshop, other were visits in uh, manufacturing companies that were open to um, collect uh, new uh, stimulus from uh, the maker movement. Um, and in some other cases there, there were presentations or conferences. The point is that uh, uh, through this program we had uh, uh, the possibility to interact with several communities, not only with the Florentine one, and the idea is to uh, not to become ourselves as local enabling spaces, the nodes that keeps together all this relation, but rather to become the room where this conversation happens. So just that's the, 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 the art of hosting, let's say. <laughs> And then, of course, uh, we uh, set up these local enabling spaces, um, connecting also other spaces uh, that we were in relation with. And so, for example, uh, just, to, just to make an example, when we uh, organized an event uh, in Milan, uh, of course, we entered in contact with We Make, because uh, we are interested in uh, uh, collaborating with who is already working on local network. We do not want to substitute ourselves as a structure to that, it won't make any sense. And then, of course, uh, uh, we also delivered a call for prototypes that is under evaluation now, where we asked to makers and manufacturers to present prototypes, uh, or idea of prototypes, that they want to develop together to innovate their products or their processes, and in some cases also their services. Um, and uh, there, was, there will be also a, a financing of uh, 20,000 euros each for for 20 ideas. So this is what I said about the mapping process. So basically we started with direct contact of who we were in contact with and we are iterating many and many times several chain of nomination according also to the people we meet or the events we do organize or the th things we talk about in these events. And this is just a recap of how it everything keeps together. So uh, we have the digital social platform, we do have the local enabling spaces that are basically physical houses of what is happening. And we have some first groups that uh, through these two tools uh, uh, theoretically should scale up uh, through the program. And uh, basically when we say local enabling space, we are not just talking about the space, we are talking about the space, the community, and the program that the community can uh, enroll in, in, in this space, okay? So we are very uh, open to proposals from, from makers or maker spaces or groups uh, or companies, happen also with manufacturing companies, and uh, something that already happened, we in some cases go in their own space doing an event on some thematic things. So um, point is not about the space, even if it's called the local enabling space, it's about the method. Okay. 
So then uh, we had uh, some some results. We organized more than um, 80 events. Uh, we had more than 1,200 participants in uh, the 50 self-organized events we had. And these events were really all kinds of events, matchmaking, open project nights, conferences, workshops, depending also on uh, the local enabling space. So I don't know, like uh, in uh, Bratislava, there was a huge uh, focus on design. In Liverpool, there was uh, more attention to social impact. Uh, in Bilbao, there were big companies interacting with local communities, so there the interaction was kind of different, for example, from what happened in Italy, where we had really small companies, artisans, you know, like Florence is full of artisans, <laughs> and, uh, and medium enterprises that uh, wanted to innovate the way they were doing things, or that were just curious about what we were doing. So this is also important. In some cases, companies did not have already the willingness to change. They were just curious or stimulated by us or by some of the makers we entered in contact with. And then, yes, we had some shared tools, I already said this, some methodological uh, guidelines that we are all following, uh, adopting them to our local context. And this is just a recap of the events we, uh, we organized in the last uh, uh, seven, eight months. Then uh, we delivered the core for prototype. Uh, it is closed now. And I already say this, okay, there was one platform, 20 prizes, uh, five projects winning for each accelerators uh, and four accelerators. And uh, we received uh, 134 ideas and uh, with more than 400 organizations or individuals uh, uh, participating to it. So, and this is just a recap of the ideas um, where uh, they were located. So who we attracted? Basically, almost everything, okay? We had uh, proposals on arts and crafts, circular economy, fashion and textile, STEM and education, uh, health. Uh, so yes, there, there was a uh, huge attention by the maker movement on health solution, on prothesis, for example, or there are several examples, so I won't, I won't tell them all. And the interesting thing in this map is that some of these ideas were already linked between them, but not all. This means that there are a lot of blank spaces that can be filled by helping these ideas interacting between themselves and contaminating one with the other. Okay, so um, we uh, already have uh, the, the platform which for the moment only enables to navigate the community and read some articles uh, and know who are influencers or audiences of some themes. But in, in future, this will do more. And ideally, this should um, help uh, launching uh, some, uh, some challenges and uh, uh, like companies asking for solution to a crowd and also uh, attracting uh, investors uh, that can launch uh, these, these, these challenges and create opportunities for makers or maker companies. And in the end, provide valuable data, as I already said. Okay, so I thank you very much. If you want to know more about it, the platform is open. This is the link to it, explorer.openmaker.eu. So we will continue the conversation on there, I guess. Thank you very much.